One year ago, I bought an abandoned homestead in the middle of the desert. I had been living, traveling, and doing the whole van life thing for two years, but decided that while I still love living in the van and miss it a lot even now, I was ready for a bigger project and land to call my own. Boy, did I get a bigger project. Oh, I'm getting tired. Over the last year of blood, sweat, and tears, I've come a long way towards making this nasty, smelly, cockroach-infested house into a home I'm comfortable living in. (laughs) But if I'm being honest, I'm not as far along as I'd hoped I'd be in a lot of ways. There's been a lot of goals set and then reset only to be crossed off the list entirely. A lot can happen in a year. This is definitely procrastinating. Priorities change. I bought and built a utility trailer. I took extended trips away from the homestead. My dog Teddy and I started training for agility competitions and I got a new car that needs a lot of work so that I can save the miles on my nice camper van. Each of these things took time and money away from my homestead, and I have to remind myself all the time that the fact that I can focus and work on these projects instead of the homestead means that I'm comfortable. And while there's a lot that could be and will be changed and improved, it's a place to call my own that I am slowly but surely making my own. This video is to memorialize this past year's worth of work. It's honestly been super therapeutic to look through all my old videos and footage to see just how far I've come. Sometimes it's hard to remember just how small the bathroom was with the extra wall and cabinet over the toilet, or the fact that there was a huge garbage pit on my property. It's even harder to remember that I'm the one who cleaned up all that garbage and who took down that oppressive cabinet and ripped out the unnecessary wall. There's still so much to do and a million details. I wish I had time to share with you about the future and my plans for each and every nook and cranny of every room of my homestead and the surrounding land. I mean, I don't even have a stove or a full-size fridge yet, for goodness sakes. I was still sleeping in the van for months after buying the homestead only to upgrade to sleeping on a couch once it got too hot at night to be comfortable sleeping in the van. But the one thing I've learned looking through this last year's worth of work is that I have got to do a better job about celebrating my victories. I have no difficulties pulling clips of me frustrated, upset, and ready to quit. Why can't things just go right? I think I'm in over my head. Oh, I'm running out of energy. But the number of happy dances and moments of celebration are few and far between. So while it may be months past the new year, my new homestead year's resolution is to celebrate all the little things. I am so thoroughly impressed. I should have shouted from my literal rooftop when I learned how to sweep my chimney and saw the nice clean stovepipe after weeks worth of struggling to even get the right parts in my hand to accomplish the job, but I didn't. I just climbed down the ladder and went on to the next step of my project. So here's to the new year, new projects, new problems and solutions, new blood, sweat, and tears, but also new happy dances. With that, let's go back and remember the beginning. This is what the homestead looked like on day one. Half of the house had super nasty old carpet in it that was harboring its own ecosystems worth of cockroaches and spiders and I don't even want to know. The theme you'll see throughout a lot of this video is just make it livable and that was especially the name of the game for my living room. My living room has been a safe space within all the rest of the house and that started by tackling the odor with the carpet and then odor killing primer. I started skimming new drywall but never finished because it's pretty low priority. I rescreened the windows because I had to keep my windows open pretty much all summer so that my swamp cooler wouldn't pressurize and blow out my roof. 
that first screen was not fun if you watched that video. <laughs> but now that I know how to do it, I've been whipping them out left and right. Once summer was over and the weather turned cold, it was super high priority for me to get my wood stove restored since the house has no other source of heat. The living room has had a lot of different configurations over the last year, but after my dad and I got all of my stuff out of my storage unit, I finally had my bed and mattress and furniture to get away from sleeping on the couch and start making the homestead feel like a home. It's funny because you'll notice that the living room is actually serving double duty right now as my living room slash bedroom. I'm essentially living in a studio apartment right now. The reason for that is because the bedroom was so smelly and so stinky. The closet and the closet doors and the carpet, everything, that was the worst room for odor. And it took me a long time to get that tackled. And when I did finally get it tackled, it turned into a storage room. So the goal with that room is to just let it be and let it be a storage room until I am able to either buy or build a storage shed outside so that all of the stuff that's being stored in that room has a permanent home and I can reclaim that space as a bedroom. One of the bigger projects that I did, and pretty much the only project that I hired anybody to do or help me with, was adding a new door through a structural wall. The Homestead has several additions and one of the additions was the bathroom and instead of putting a new exterior door in, they just put it in the bathroom and made a little weird hallway and it's hard to explain. But essentially I'm gonna be claiming that hallway as part of the bathroom so that the bathroom won't be so teeny tiny and so that door couldn't stay there because it'd be weird to have an exterior door in your bathroom. So all that to say that I needed another door, so I put this door in and it will someday be my front door and replaced with something a little higher quality with like a window and everything, but for now it is functional. Otherwise, I haven't been able to accomplish a ton in the original homestead area this last year. This space has a lot of uses right now as my office, a tool storage area, like the big open floor is a great space to work on projects. Uh, and then also, obviously, my kitchen is along the far wall. Most recently, I built and added some IKEA PAX wardrobes. In the future, they'll be my coat closet, and I probably will do some custom doors and veneer, which is why they don't have any doors on it right now. But for now, they're my regular closet, which is just so nice. Obviously, the long-term goal is to have my clothing in my bedroom, but I need to get a storage shed first so that everything being stored in the bedroom can get cleaned out. And I need to finish the floors and reskin the drywall and paint, and then I have to build the whole wall of wardrobes where that giant closet used to be. So that will be quite a ways in the future. One of the plans I have for this space, which I hope I can get done in the not too distant future, is to replace the windows. So here in the homestead, this big window will be replaced by a sliding door so I can get rid of the exterior door that's in the living room. But I also need to replace and make the windows in the kitchen area smaller so I can fit my cabinets and everything. All of the windows in the homestead are single pane aluminum windows, so they transfer heat like crazy. The homestead gets very hot. So not only is it really important for me to do it to, you know, be able to make my plans work and everything, but I need to do it because of comfort and energy efficiency and all that. A long ways into the future after I've got my mini split installed and the windows replaced so that heating and cooling isn't so difficult, I want to open up the doorway between the homestead and the living room so that it's maybe like five feet wide and it ties the two living areas together a bit more. The other half of the homestead area has the kitchen. One of the things that you'll see a lot in this video is water, septic <laughs> drains, things like that. Um, I had the kitchen sink all backed up. That's galvanized pipe, uh, so that will all have to be replaced when I get around to remodeling the kitchen. I also had a, a scrapper come out and grab the stove instead of trying to fix it or use it. And I'm so glad I did because uh, if you saw that episode, there was a dead rat skeleton living inside the guts of that stove. So 
definitely not food safe. I have spent an awful lot of time working on this bathroom and I feel like I don't have very much to show for it, but that's only because it was starting from a pretty rough place. So there was a huge cabinet above the toilet, which really that bathroom could use all the storage it can get, but the cabinet itself was so gross that I wasn't going to use it. So I tore it down and I tore down the wall separating the bathroom from that little hallway since, like I said, I'm not going to keep that little hallway with that new front door I installed. And then when my dad came to visit, it was super important that I had a door on my bathroom because I had taken my old one off. So I installed a new door and I installed it wrong. Again, that's a fun video to watch if you want a good laugh. It's actually upside down, so the handle is at the wrong height. I have not fixed it yet, but that's a-okay. The bathroom is one of the things I felt super sure about how I was going to remodel it. And as time has gone on, I'm starting to wonder about the cost and the feasibility. Is it smart to move all of my water to an exterior wall? So at this point, it's up in the air, but that's okay. The bathroom is going to happen a long time in the future. So I still have plenty of time to think about it. As you guys can see, I haven't completely finished taking out that wall. I have to do the drywall and everything here soon. Um, but yeah, the bathroom is probably really close to how it's going to stay for a very long time. So that kind of concludes the homestead area and all the things inside, but something related to the bathroom is the septic system. Um, basically the whole year I was struggling with the septic system. It would clog, it would get snaked, and then it'd clog again. And I finally got a plumber out there who said that, oh, it's a tree root. So I went and I dug up the pipe and found where the tree root came in and cut out the section just to replace the one little section where the root was and found out that the whole pipe was collapsing and basically i had to replace the whole thing so i am very grateful to my father who dug for an entire day straight to help me replace all the septic line and now that is good to go until i'm ready to actually remodel my bathroom which is going to be a very long time in the future because the kitchen is more important and both of those are very big ticket items that are going to cost a lot of money and take a long time for me to save up for so at this point, I'm just going to take a pause here and let you guys enjoy where the homestead is today. So like I said at the beginning of the video, my property was an abandoned pot farm and I don't know when it started, but it's been going on for a very long time that they've just been using different parts of the property as landfills. And I can't tell you how many bottle caps and cigarette butts I have picked up out of the driveway. There are nails everywhere. So when I first got to the house, I started renting dumpsters. I ended up hauling out three huge dumpsters worth of garbage from the property before deciding that I couldn't sustain that. It was too expensive. And so I bought a Harbor Freight trailer kit that I built so I could take care of my own garbage. One of the really nice things about where I live is that you get free dumps at the landfill if you're a resident. 
So as soon as I knew that I was getting the trailer, I applied for that and got my dump card. With each load to the dump I take, the trailer is slowly but surely paying for itself and it's really good to be able to do all of that on my own time. One of the other things that I did right when I first moved in was replace pretty much every single thing inside of my swamp cooler. Summer's right around the corner this time of year and it was going to be way too hot for me to not be able to run my swamp cooler. So a couple hundred dollars worth of pumps and motors and new pads and everything and my swamp cooler was good to go. That made such a huge improvement to my quality of life. And something else that was a huge improvement to quality of life was getting a washing machine out here. I have hookups inside the homestead to be able to do both a washer and a dryer, but they're right smack dab in the middle of the kitchen. And for the majority of the year, my drain line and septic were not good enough to be able to drain a washing machine. They definitely would have overflowed and I would have had a huge mess. So I put my washing machine outside and I just don't want a dryer. There's really no reason to have one out in the desert. And after living in Europe for a couple of years, I just don't see the point in them. The property had all sorts of galvanized steel posts in the ground, so I went ahead and DIY'd my own clothesline, saved myself the money of ordering one, and used up some materials that I already had on hand that I'm not entirely sure what else I can do with at this point in time. The project that's probably taken up the most real estate in all my videos throughout the year has got to be taking down the rickety privacy fence. This fence, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know I loathe. I hate everything about it. I hate the fact that it's there. I hate how it's constructed. It's falling down and whoever tried to patch it, patched it so poorly that they just ended up helping the fence fall down faster. One of those goals that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that I have set and reset has been to take down the entirety of the privacy fence. I did have a goal to have it completely down before this video, before my one year anniversary, and that clearly didn't happen. But I'm getting there slowly but surely, and it's been really nice over the winter to be able to burn all the fence panels that were too poor of condition to want to save, so I had free firewood. It was a great way to make something even more positive out of taking down that fence uh, by burning it. I've had a number of other random outdoor projects. There's been lots to clean up and old structures to take down. I painted the fascia that got replaced with the new roof. And one of the things that's taken a lot of trial and error is learning how to compost here in the desert. Obviously there's not a lot of water and it's hard to keep compost wet so that it composts. So I built a box and I stopped using it and then I started using it again and I think I finally hit my stride and I'm actually getting compost now. This last year has been a lot of taking away, throwing away, getting rid of. So it was nice that one of my most recent projects has been to plant a mesquite tree that should shade my garden and provide some privacy in the years to come. So that pretty much sums up everything I've accomplished on my homestead this last year. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the exterior is looking and I'm hoping that I can start to make even more progress here soon by taking down the rest of the privacy fence, some of which has started to fall down on its own at this point. Once it's done, I plan to hire a tractor to come out, pull all the posts and smooth out the mounds of dirt that are pushed up against the fence. And when they do that, they'll be able to fill in all the holes left from the marijuana plants. Once that project's finished, it opens up so many more opportunities. I can make my real driveway and begin parking in the front of my house. I can start planning my garden area and begin building that new fence, which will not be a six foot tall privacy fence. <laughs> and I could start replanting some native plants to restore that bulldozed section of the desert. 
But like I said, I'm still really pleased by how the exterior is looking. I mean, you couldn't even see most of the house before and now all the garbage is picked up and I'm slowly picking up the excessive piles of rocks everywhere. The only negative is that I've added my own piles of clutter, but at least they are organized and at least they're temporary. I'm not sure if it's something I'll do in the super near future, but I definitely need a workshop slash storage shed. Once that's done, a lot of the clutter in the patio and inside the homestead will vanish. Over the last year, I've gotten to experience all the weather Mother Nature has to offer down here. We had a pretty significant monsoon that caused a river to form down my driveway. A uh, one day snowstorm late in the winter and the cool thing about rain in the desert is that there's almost always a rainbow to be found. So I've kind of stopped counting the rainbows and started looking for double rainbows at this point. The one bad thing about being out here is that it's pretty windy and sometimes those windy days turn into actual dust storms. Uh, which can be kind of intense. So overall, one year later, I'm still really happy with my decision to start the homestead. It's been a lot of hard work, which you've seen, but it's just so beautiful here that even when I'm feeling down about a project or being hard on myself, that I haven't made as much progress as I should have. It's so easy to look around and see something that makes me happy. For being in the desert, I have so much wildlife. I have snakes and coyotes, jackrabbits, roadrunners, which I had never seen before, and more songbirds and lizards than I could ever count. I'm not from the area, so I really enjoy being able to look up and learn all the different species of critters on my property. And it's so crazy to see how things change even in just one year because last year I had tons of Mojave ground squirrels and this year I have tons of antelope squirrels and they're both just the cutest darn things ever even though they're going to be a pain when I start to do a garden. The other thing that's just unreal here at the homestead are the sunsets. Pretty much Every night has a killer sunset and it usually coincides with when I take Teddy to get his energy out for the evening. While the winters can be a bit noisy with all the ATVs and the off-roaders, I really appreciate how silent it is in the summer. Once it cools off a bit in the evening, I can just spend hours enjoying the quiet and the sun lighting up the sky. So that's it. One year's worth of work condensed down into a little over 20 minutes. Obviously, there isn't a square inch of my homestead that isn't still a work in progress, but it's starting to reflect me, who I am, and what I want for my little piece of this world. I recently checked out a library book on this area and the homesteads that are so common to it, and it had a quote that really stuck out to me. It's from 1954, and I was shocked at how true it is still today. The quote was, These homesteads are for people who delight in watching the moon rise over purple hills, for those who would call the stars by name, and who love the peace that is found only in remote places. So, as I said before, here's to a new year, and if you remember my new homestead year's resolution, more happy dances. <laughs>